Now, before the pandemic, I'm sure many of us were sharing the same experience. I would travel back and forth to Toronto every day of the week and sometimes on the weekends for a bit of fun. Since April 6th, I have been downtown once. Clearly, the cities have gone through a profound change. In our Future of Series, we're asking the question, what is the future of cities? As more of us work from home and uh, we await some sort of resolution to the pandemic, let's bring in Mark Cahan. He's chair of Toronto Global, also former CFL commissioner. Mark, always a pleasure to speak with you. And what, what I mean, what can we expect of the city experience going forward? Do, do these changes that we've had in our life stick or can we return to the way cities used to be? I tend to be optimistic when I think about Toronto and the Toronto region. I believe that our city will come back. Listen, I was out walking my dog yesterday through U of T around Queen's Park and there was no one. So it's sad right now, obviously. But the things that were driving Toronto before, um, you know, the most cranes of any city in North America, um, you know, the talent, the immigration, uh, the cultural events, these will be the things that allows the cities to come back. And, and I fundamentally believe that um, we're a strong city. Other cities in, in North America that might have had the wrong trends, I think will hurt. I think a city like Toronto will come back strong. You know, when you mentioned taking a walk through the Queen's Park grounds in the University of Toronto, anyone who's familiar with them knows that the architecture and the buildings are beautiful. And I had a little like a pang of nostalgia there that I would like to take that walk as well. So, yeah, I mean, I think there is an appetite there for people to get back into the city for what it has to offer and the experiences. But clearly, uh, the pandemic itself is the big challenge. And this idea that even though the vaccine has arrived and Canadians are starting to get it, we have a couple of uh, really tough months ahead of us. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Listen, I also wear the hat as the chairman of uh, the Juno Awards and the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. We have the 50th Juno. It's going to be based in Toronto this year. We've moved it back to May. It was supposed to be in March. Hopefully, we can do some things outside. So, um, you know, it's going to take time. We all know. We've been listening to our government leaders. We've been listening to our medical leaders. But if we think about this city and those things that were strong, going into the pandemic of all these international businesses that Toronto Global is working with coming into the city, even during this pandemic, you know, we've seen uh, companies commit, Sanofi just committed a half a billion dollars to develop, um, to expand their plants here. We've seen companies coming into still the Toronto core. I think there'll be fundamental changes and shifts. Uh, but if you think of the young people who want vibrant culture, who want a type of lifestyle, that will eventually come back. I imagine other cities right now, I mean, we're all living through this experience uh, globally, are, are taking the time of the pandemic to, as you are, to, to get a strategy together about what makes our city uh, attractive for investment? What makes our city rebound? How, how do we sell Toronto into the world in, in ways that uh, we get an advantage over other cities? You know, our team at Toronto Global uh, continues to talk to companies around the world. Uh, probably in a few months, we're going to announce a few deals from Indian companies, technology companies that are going to be coming into the Toronto region. And I think there's the fundamental things. It's our talent. Uh, you know, whether it's homegrown talent or the ability to bring in uh, immigrants from around the world. Now, we're usually bringing in about 100,000 new immigrants into the Toronto region every year. This year, it's only been about 30 percent of that, obviously, because of the pandemic. So I think talent, I think the quality of life. Um, we've always been ranked as one of the cleanest cities in the world, one of the greenest cities in the world. The culture that we have. All these type of things are the way we continue to differentiate ourselves. A.T. Kearney just had a report about the fastest rising global cities. We're number two after London, England. So uh, I think as we come out of this, all those things that we were proud of before, those foundational blocks will help us in the rebuild. I mentioned off the top of your former life at the CFL. You're also an executive of the NBA with Major League Baseball. In your past, I mean, apart from people just enjoying sport for the sake of sport, clearly having teams playing in your city and drawing crowds is a huge boon for the economy. This will probably be key for a lot of cities, including Toronto. Yeah, absolutely. We need to get people back in our stadiums. Obviously, the Raptors will be playing south of the borders. I'm not sure yet what will happen with the NHL and the Canadian teams. But 
Um, as we look towards the end of 2021 and into 2022, that's where you start to hopefully see that enough people had the vaccine, uh, that the herd immunity comes into effect and people can start to gather again, both in stadiums. But as I said, in my other hat as concerts, you know, that the live entertainment industry can start to come back and people can start to go to concerts and music and bring that bustle that you don't get outside of cities back into the core of the city. And that will be mo the most important thing uh, for the, I guess, the rebirth of the Toronto region. Is there a chance here uh, during the downtime of the pandemic when we don't have the crush and the volume of people leaving and entering a city? When you start talking about sports events and concerts, I remember one night several years ago, uh, there was a sports event on, Taylor Swift was in town, there was something else going on, and it was like you were trapped in the city, I mean, the mobility of the city, right? Toronto was getting very crowded. We've had a bit of breathing space. Is this time for the city to rethink how we move people in and out of it? Oh, absolutely. I think this is a really interesting time. I mean, uh, you know, patio to the ability to carve off some of the streets and make them more walking destinations. I know uh, councillors are talking about some in, uh, new initiatives on Young Street, uh, south of College, down to Queen Street, make it more of a walking destination. These are type of things now that I think the city really needs to focus on. And what has been good in this experience, like we are naturally um, social people. And I think these type of things, I remember talking to so many executives, international executives who come to see Toronto. You know, they make their decisions because they do see the vibrancy of the city when a Taylor Swift concert is on, when the Raptors are playing and the Jays are playing. I think those type of things, um, if we can make it a friendlier city, um, more outdoors, more walking, more bike I think those type of things will be very important. And then you obviously have to overlay it with the mass transportation. And as people get more comfortable, we'll see people coming back uh, in our mass transportation as well. All right, Mark, great to catch up with you. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Nice to see you. Thank you. Mark Hahn is the chair of Toronto Global.